The other day, I opened up my stream to an outsider. For a while, it's just been me and Cance, figuring out things on the internet, learning about drama, love, and loss. And I thought it would be disgusting of me not to share this with the world. So I opened up our little circle and I let one of my favorite people, Stan's Mod Midnight in. I told him, hey, just get some links, walk me through something you think is interesting. It's gonna be a great time. I gave him a week to do this. Now he came on stream, it hurts to say, he came on stream and he had absolutely nothing. He literally went through the suggestions tab of my Discord live while I was streaming, trying to find even a single thing that would be interesting to the viewers. And even though we got there, it hurt. So when he told me that his only redemption would be in the hands of another outsider, someone who is not myself or can't, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it. But ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna try again because we are bringing on The Veil, vale, who I have been told is a Riz Lord. If this isn't good, Midnight gets banned for good. Ladies and gentlemen, The Veil. Vale. Hi, kitten. <laughs> oh my God. Now um, I want I want to warn you before you hit play. Uh huh. There's no going back. By the end of this, you should have the tools to just be naturally, passively rizzing people. Okay. Right now, uh -huh. you're a beta twink sitting at his little desk with am his I little a, stuffed am I a animal. Beta twink. <laughs> oh, you're definitely a beta twink. Okay. Oh my gosh. And after this. I'm talking invites from from alphas like you got Aiden Ross will hit you up. You've got uh -huh. Andrew Tate, his one phone call from prison. From a prison week. is going to be to me because I won't be such a beta twink. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, you guys have similar interests. You guys I'm are sorry, what, both name alphas. Name, name, oh, being an alpha. That's our similar interest. Yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, I will tell you that I have been assigned my role in the gay community. And it wasn't twink. I mean, you are kind of a twink. Do you know what, do you remember what your role yeah, is? Yeah, Austin show, we had a long conversation about it, said I am what the people call an otter. Okay. Say someone said was an otter. They knew. Oh, wow. They could see it. Otter for sure. And you're saying that you can use that term because you have a gay friend? Okay, uh, you know, yeah, no, for sure, man. I, I'm no, saying... I know how that's how you are, for sure. <laughs> otter, uh, otter in gay culture. I actually didn't look up what it meant. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't know because I only ruse with women. <sighs> Sorry, one second. I need to learn. A subset of the term bear, which describes the stereotype of hairy and big gay men. Yeah. I am a, a more lean, effeminate bear. Just... I honestly don't know if that applies. I think we should come up with a new gay term right now called the sloth. And that's what you are. <laughs> right. What would that be? What would that? How would I personify a sloth? Uh, neither bear nor twink. Uh, oh. Mostly qualities of twink, but uh, lazy tends Excuse to me? lose chess boxing matches. I am a hardworking lover, to be clear. <laughs> the who is Taylor Swift method will guarantee you getting with any white woman or your money mm. back guaranteed. When you're meeting a white woman of interest, you're going to have a normal conversation with them. And as those conversations typically progress, you ask them who their favorite artist is. 90% of white women are going to say Taylor Swift. Here's where True. you drop the bomb. You're just gonna stare at them blankly and you're gonna be like, who's Taylor Swift? I've never heard of them. They're gonna yeah, look at you crazily, but you have to convince them that you genuinely do not know who Taylor Swift is and you're not just messing with them. The right. best way to do this is convince yourself that you don't know who Taylor Swift is. You gotta True. gaslight yourself to gaslight them. Is it even gaslighting them if you've already gaslit yourself? Because at that point, you don't know who Taylor Swift is. <laughs> exactly. I think you're exactly. actually being open and honest with them. So right now, at this point in the video, we have hmm. learned that our whole goal is to tell a woman that we don't know who Taylor Swift is. But I'm not necessarily sure how to parlay that you into don't... romantic success. Let's is he, I hope we. I hope we get there. Yeah. You do not know who Taylor Swift is. She's going to want to introduce you to Taylor Swift's discography. This is going to cause more time to be spent with each other Boom. and may even lead to a strong emotional bond. And as always, game is indubitably game. <laughs> does, he, does he say that Indubitably. <laughs> indubitably. Okay, that doesn't seem that bad. Sorry, you no, said that. You, bad, and, you said that I'm Andrew Tate and I'm taking the red pill. That was just pretending not to know something. You know, so Andrew Tate says some really smart stuff. 
sometimes. <laughs> you know what I this mean? is, is this not, is this even that bad? Am I crazy? Game is indubitable you know, game. I think, uh, I think it's not about how bad it is, but it's about how good it is. I think it's about, it's the truth. Um, I think uh, it, it has worked for me. I've pulled seven different white women uh, uh -huh. simply by pretending I didn't know who Taylor Swift was. Okay. And uh, two black women by saying I didn't know who Beyonce was. That was a hard one to sell. <laughs> that was harder to sell than Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, here's the deal. <laughs> let me let you in on a little secret. Guilty pleasure. Love uh -huh. Beyonce. You know right, what I mean? Queen can't, B. Can't have the boys knowing I listen to women. <laughs> Love Beyonce. Why can't you have the boys know you listen to women? Uh, yeah. This is so. This is I'm very sorry. personal. To Are me. you kidding me? What? The autism method. Yep. Don't this, is, this is a good one. This is a key here. Okay. Should I just start it? You said it was personal, dude. Do you want to tell a story? Uh, I just have autism, so this one really resonated. This was my gateway into into this guy. Got it. You saw this one first. The first step of this method is you got to convince yourself that you are actually autistic. And that shouldn't be that hard considering 80% of the internet has already done that. You're going to develop hobbies. You're going to develop yep. hyper fixations for those hobbies. And then here's the most important step, okay? You're going to go wherever on your college campus there are a bunch of business or marketing classes, okay? These are filled with career-driven women. Hell, you could go to the law building on your college campus if they have one, and you could get yourself a cougar. But anyways, if you want to be a stay-at-home dad, you need a dominant woman. And these dominant women are looking for submissive men who have no direction in their life and are a little autistic. Sound familiar? So you're going to go to one of the- <laughs> Sorry, sound, sound familiar what? All right. You know what? I'm going to say the quiet part out loud. Stans. Say the quiet part out loud. I've been waiting for it. It's the sap sloth -a -thon, you know, <laughs> that you happen to cross being friends with a top marketer. Uh -huh, it's the uh -huh. fact that you play video games all day while your wife does all the work. I uh -huh. mean, I think you've already seen this video. <laughs> I will say my wife has a marketing degree. And oh. she also once told me, this is not a slight on her, that she thought I was autistic. Uh, not like in an internet jokey way, in a I think we should see a doctor way. <laughs> not. And I railed against it. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And the, the more things I see, I think the internet, I think I'm actually being rizzed by this guy. I am, the internet's trying to convince me that I'm autistic. That, like, that my hobbies are hyper fixations and not just hobbies. Yeah, this is, I feel like, uh, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you Am I just a natural Rizzler? Do I not no. even need this guy as my <laughs> no. teacher? Am yeah, I you're actually, a natural I feel like this guy may be documenting it, but he's basically using my life story to promote it. I mean, I think that a broken clock is right twice a day. And I think right. that's as close as you'll get, buddy. And you're going to act clueless. These women got all the masculine societal traits, so they probably will approach you. And then after that, you just got to act submissive for the entire relationship. Downsides to this. You may get pegged in that relationship. <laughs> that may be an upside for he you. Says I don't know downside. who you are. And as always, game is indubitably game. Speak to that stance. Is it a downside? Uh, I think it's a neutral side. You think? You yeah. don't? How is it for you? I've never been pegged. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why, 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 I'm sorry, why are you laughing? You're very, you may not be a Riz Lord, but you are very funny. You are very <laughs> funny. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, chat knows. All right, we, we can move to the next video, but that was a good one. Okay, th th thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. The period tracking method might be the best manipulation tactic out there. Bells, have you ever been talking to a girl or in a relationship? and you weren't sure how to go about manipulating them, then this no. method- No! Can I say no? Can I, can I say that's never once popped into my mind because that's insane? I've this never been sitting thought. there just fucking picking my ass going like, what's the new hot manipulation tactic? What am I going to do to fucking manipulate today? What do you think about when you pick your ass? Um, picking my ass mostly, that flight, the Delta flight <laughs> at this point. And Rochelle. All right, go on. <laughs> method is for you. Once right. you know when her period starts, you're going to put that into the tracking app, give or take a day, and you will know everything you need to know. In the first seven days of her menstrual cycle, you're going to buy her chocolate, you're going to get her favorite drink from Starbucks or Dutch Bros, and you're going to get her tampons. Is she that not extremely creepy? I like this one because it started out like actually just kind of nice. Other than the period tracking app, it's just like if you found out when your friend... Like if she was like, oh man, I'm on my period, it fucking sucks. Yeah. And you were just like, 
oh, so I went and got you chocolate. I just feel like, you know, a nice thing to bring. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, this one's actually nice. pretty good. And yeah, <laughs> that's, that's great. It's the preemptive strike and how much of it there is. You know, because you, know, you might you might give it to the person before they need it. Feminine products are expensive stands, so <laughs> that's the problem. Sorry, twenty twenty three. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. After ovulation, her energy is going to drop again, and you're going to fill her text up with compliments constantly. You will be the talk of her group chat. I promise. And as always, game is game. game no, is game is game, indubitably man. game. Man, the first one felt kind of like jokey. This one feels like a guy who's tried to... It, like, maybe it started as a joke, and now he's just turning into a, a men's rights activist. Have you ever had someone you liked, but you did not know how you could get them to like you back? Mm -hmm. This method is for you. We call it the Oppenheimer method because you are going to give your romantic interest, the person that you want to get to like you, explosive diarrhea. So first off, let's address... Yeah. What's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, See, that you just, you haven't even thought of the methods. I haven't thought of that method, no. If, in fact, if you'd showed me Oppenheimer method, I don't think I ever would have thought drugging them to give them explosive diarrhea. You're going to take one of those big bottles of Miralax, one of these things, right? And you are going to get your romantic interest to consume basically as much of this as you can get them to consume under their radar. And they're just going to be shitting themselves like all the time in public. Like it's going to be really embarrassing for them. And that's the why to this whole madness, okay? The whole goal of this tactic is to drive their supporting cast to people around them, their friends, away from them. So they feel alone, right? That's horrible. And so you can swoop in and be that supporting cast for them. And from there, since you are the only person that cares about them and shows that you care about them, they're going to start to gradually gain feelings for you. Anyways, game is game. The answer of the Oppenheimer method was literally remove everyone else from their life so that you're the only candidate? Hey, <laughs> say it with me. Game is game indubitably is game. game. <laughs> I'm with I'll you. take it. Hey, I noticed you don't have your notepad out, and I feel uh, like you're not taking this seriously. Sorry, I've been recording this because I'm going to watch it back later. Oh, okay. Just, you know, make sure you don't post this. This is... This oh, is secret, this is a secret. trade secret. This is trade secrets just for Oh yeah, I'm recording, but that's it. I'm not like live or anything, and this won't go on my YouTube. So. Okay, this is the last one you've sent me, but maybe the most interesting. The femboy method will guarantee you financial security for yourself and generations to come. You will learn more about business in this video than any college class lecture. So pay attention. Class is in session. All right, first thing you're going to do is you're going to download a bunch of dating apps. Next thing you're going to do is for each dating app, you're going to find a bunch of pictures of femboys online and create a profile based off of that. Or you could just recreate the pictures yourself. I don't know you. You might be into that. Then you're going I have, to say I have photos of you if you if you need. You have photos of me. Yep. Of photos you, the of one me time. Yeah, you you took you did that Bedora shoot for our friend anniversary where you dressed as a cat boy. The Dora shoot for our but, friend of No, 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 no. Bedoir? Oh, boudoir. I thought you meant I dressed like Dora, a.k.a. the Explorer, <laughs> for some reason. No, that would be weird. You dressed as a cat boy and sent me risque photos. Right, on our friend anniversary, which we both know the day, so we'll say it on three. One, two, three. Christmas. Didn't happen. <laughs> oh. Why would we meet on Christmas? I'm spending time with my family. you're the greatest family. gift I've ever I'm, received. I'm not going to spend time with you on Christmas. That's you already absurd. Did. You already did. You called me your little ho, ho, ho. Then you're going to only like profiles who very clearly have a lot of money. They have a nice car in the background. They have a nice house in the background. They have a boat. And then they you just wait for the matches Arizona. to come in. Because those yeah. old guys have a lot of weird kinks that they don't tell anyone about. Hell, you might even match with some of our politicians. After that, you're just going to ask for money for exclusive pictures of yourself. I'm telling you, tons of old men are out there waiting to throw money. And as always, game is indubitably game. Game is indubitably game. Amen. Uh, there is one I forgot to send okay. you. This uh, one yeah, I, I personally use. You personally use this method. Yeah, I had it done to me once, and now I am stuck. I've seen a lot of talk about the vaping, and it's just, it's been three years. Um, but hey, <laughs> at the end of the day, the game is indubitably game, so. I've seen a lot yeah, of talk about the nicotine patch method, but a lot of you are doing it wrong. There are a lot of specific steps, and if done correctly, it will get the person physically addicted to you. 
first off, they got to be comfortable enough with you to fall asleep next to you, right? So this isn't like a talking stage type of thing. So once they fall asleep, you got to have a nicotine patch on hand, ready to go, and you're just going to slide it on their arm. And you're just going to act like you're pulling them in closer. They're probably dreaming about you, and they probably won't even Why know. are so many of these about drugging women? It's not drugging women. You can't look at it like that. That would obviously be bad. That would obviously be bad. Yes, that would be bad. I'm sorry. You How should I be looking at it? You providing comfort through any means necessary to your significant other. But you're also providing discomfort. No, they're asleep. I mean, and <laughs> it's fine. I mean, what I mean, about you're not leaving it all long? Wears off. Well, then they want more, and they go to sleep, and you give them another. Just finish the video. Got it. Got it. You have to be the first thing they see when they wake up. You got to be their prince or princess charming, because now their brain's wired, right? Because of the nicotine. But if they see you. They're going to think that that's because of that, because they weren't aware of the nicotine patch. But let's say they're like facing a different direction and they see their cat first, right? <laughs> that's just going to make them more obsessed with their cat. So positioning is everything in this one. Pause. And you know, game is indubitably game. That actually tracks. Now I get it. Now yeah, I, I did. I did, yeah. I did that once. I did that once and they ended up obsessed with sloths. And it was, um, that was a little bit of a backfire, but you know. I, I, yeah, I can't right. imagine someone who'd be obsessed with sloths. Right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, this is a little awkward. Uh, and my Discord kitten is, I'm getting like three calls right now. I'm going to have to let you go. But uh, I hope you learned something. I feel like I learned something. I'm not sure it was the something that you wanted me to learn. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Life is a lesson. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> no, that, that was it. Life, you know, that's all there life, is to it. Life is a lesson. Very cool. The Veil, thank you for coming on board. Thank you for revealing your secrets. I will not do any of them. And I will also maybe spend time trying to educate the youth about the problems with these. Because while it was ironic, it seems like maybe a lot of people are watching it non-ironically. For sure. And, uh, oh, my mic went out. No, you're here. I hear you. Can you hear me, kitten? Bye, The Veil. See you, Stan. Ladies and gentlemen, that was The Veil. I hope you enjoyed.